guys, UFC 289 is this weekend, and my partners, DraftKings Sportsbook, are offering new customers $200 in bonus bets instantly. All you have to do is sign up using the promo code SUDDEN and bet just $5. That's right, new customers can bet just $5 on any of this weekend's fights and receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. Use the $200 in bonus bets on DraftKings Same Fight Parlay. This is going to give you a shot for an even bigger payout. Combine multiple bets together from the same fight, including number of rounds and method of victory. The more bets you combine, the more money you can win. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy with the chance to win huge cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. New customers, use promo code SUN and bet just $5 on any wager and get 200 bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SUN and only at DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm grabbing my coffee. I'm headed out the door here. I was just watching a thing. It was a thing on the on the interwebs. Um, it was about a guy who was a master or a practitioner, and it was something called it was called like heavy hand, some kind of training, but it was heavy hand. He was he was trained in. You know those guys that break the boards or they break the bricks or things like this? They squish a watermelon, bust open a... <laughs> they bust open a coconut. I probably don't have to keep going with examples, do I? I think, I think you get the point of these heavy-handed guys. But, all right, you got, you, you, you got Joe Heavy Hands here. He decides to test himself in a sparring situation uh, with a female boxer. And he gets touched up pretty good and he learns a lesson. And... I, I only bring that to you because people will be so quick to tease these martial arts that they even want to call fake. And, man, that's tough. That's a tough one for me. Like, there's a real arrogance in that. There's a real arrogance on if you put in X amount of time and you learned a skill that when push came to shove was truly applicable in what they told you it would be applicable in, which is unarmed combat. Like, but, but now let's say you have another person that put in the same amount of time, right? They, they had to pay the same gym fees. They had to ask their mom and dad and, 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 and get in the car and get down there and they had to change their clothes and they had to get on the mat and they had to sacrifice and, and not go to parties and be away from friends and w whatever it took to learn the skill that they have that turns out when push came to shove, they were completely duped and it's a useless skill. But my, to tease that person, I think it's low. They didn't know. They believed somebody. They didn't have the same experiences. They didn't have the same magazines, TV, social groups, whatever it might be. And when I talk about that and I talk about philosophies and I talk about people that actually go put it on the line, right? Because because Mr. Heavy Hand that breaks the co coconuts open here, he was willing to get in there and test it. And he wasn't doing it, by the way, if you watch the video, he wasn't doing it to hurt his opponent. He was doing it to help them. He thought that he had a skill. They weren't willing to listen to him about how effective his skill was and how it could really help them. They weren't willing to listen, so he was just gonna have to show them. And it turned out that he got shown, but I don't know where we would pick on the guy. And you know, philosophies are very, very rare. And when somebody has the courage to put one forward, but moreover, they, they have the courage to then go and test that, right? I mean, you got one level of confidence to open up a school, and you'll usually use three words, right? That all came from Jeet Kune Do. You'll, you usually put three words in, mama's tie, Kempo, to, to describe your martial arts gym and your training system. And you gotta have a real confidence to go get that commercial space and take that business license and 
learn about electronic fund transfers and sign people up and keep the place clean and figure out what you're going to do for uniforms and age groups and scheduling, you got to have a real confidence. It's another level of confidence to get in there or get out there in front of X amount of people and test your theory. I know lots and I know I, a lot more as a matter of fact. Not only do I know lots of guys, I know more guys by a meaningful percentage than of philosophies within training, within combat, who have opened up gyms and made a career out of it that were not willing to actually put it on the line. And, you know, I, I think all of this stems, I'm still upset. I'm upset at the way our community treated Kron Gracie's last fight. I'm not over it. I think it was rude. Kron Gracie's father is Hickson Gracie, who is the only meaningful person of modern time. Please don't write me a message and tell me some folklore that you heard. I'm talking about a meaningful person that is recognized by the masses. He is only the second person in time to put a philosophy forward for unarmed combat. The great Muhammad Ali himself did not do that. Sugar Ray Leonard did not do that. Mike Tyson did not do that. Tyson Fury not only didn't do it, he doesn't plan to do it. Bruce Lee and Hicks and Gracie came forward with philosophies and ideas of how to protect yourself in unarmed combat. And moreover, and the bigger difference with Hickson is he was willing to prove it. And as much as you might believe in jujitsu or grappling, or you know the history of the UFC and Hoist and Henzo and what all these guys did, you might not remember in 1993 when nobody believed it would work. I mean, that's the one piece of the story, and it's, it's the biggest piece of the story. It gets lost. I don't hear it throughout translation of the timeline uh, of mixed martial arts as we know it. I, I don't ever hear it mentioned. It is the biggest element in the story. It's bigger than the triangle and the guillotine and the Hickson versus Mark Schultz in the wrestling room. It's bigger than all that stuff. When the Gracies came out and said... They've got a style to finish fights that is the most devastating and effective art on the face of the planet. Oh, by the way, it's gentle. We can win fights against anybody. We can finish them decisively proving who the victor is. Bro, we had to be taught with that. What do we mean finish a fight? The foggiest idea with that, man. I was a junior in high school, 17 years old in 1993. Never heard that term. Let me finish a fight. What does that mean? And now they're claiming that they can do it gently. They're claiming that there's techniques and strategies where they can conduct themselves in unarmed combat without hurting the opponent. Nobody believed that. That is ridiculous, truly. And then you started to have some closed door workouts. And guys, don't forget, the internet came out. First time I ever heard of it was 1994, but it was towards the end of 94. It's more like 95. And for the extent of the internet, largely it was something called email. It was an electronic mail where you didn't have to go to a post office. You didn't have to get a stamp. It's a very foreign concept. Not only did people not have email or not know what it was, they didn't have email addresses. And if they did, they didn't know how to send anything. They didn't have a computer to go do it from. It was a very different time. So when you started having people vouching for Hicks and Gracie. These were people like Chuck Norris. These were very meaningful people, but they were open to learning and they held seminars and they had private workouts that nobody was at and there was no cameras. And word starts to travel that this guy making these big claims can actually do it. So you fast forward all the way to a couple of weeks ago to Kron's fight and people are so upset he wasn't throwing enough strikes. I'm not against taking a look at a performance. I'm not on board with the outcome, but I, I would encourage, that's a coach in me. I, I would never want an athlete to, to be sitting there thinking about and dwelling on the outcome. I do want him focused and prepared to perform. Three things, 
three things that you were going to do, that you're committed to, you're dedicated, tell yourself over and over, go out and do those three things. And when I bring that up, it, it really wasn't about winning or losing. For Kron, there was strategically some opportunities for aggressiveness that it's very fair to watch after the fact. Well, the point that I'm trying to make, even if he had won the fight, it would be very fair to look at the opportunities for aggressiveness that he passed up. That's fair game. But it feels different when that's being done when he didn't win the fight. And there's a tremendous misunderstanding. This wasn't done out of a stubbornness. This wasn't done out of a, I refused in the old school way and he was trying to prove a point. It wasn't done out of fatigue. That's a big part of the story too. He was too tired. That's, that's not what happened. There's only a couple of men who have ever stepped forward with a philosophy. One of them was his father. So like anything, it's got the right to adapt and change over time, but it takes a courage to go out there and test those theories. And from 93 to today, we've never seen anything from the Gracie family that should make us think when a contest or a performance doesn't go as well as you want it to, that they're gonna stop. Everything we've seen since 1993 says they're going to adapt. There was people that said, powerful people within our sport, that said the Gracies would never fight again. As soon as the commission got involved in the year was 2001, as soon as they put a round system in, where after five minutes, wherever you are, they're gonna bring you back to your feet. People said the Gracies would never fight again. And here we are 23 years later, and Hickson's son himself is in there putting it on the line to critique the performance is fair. To offer suggestions is appropriate. To think that because something wasn't done on a night that they're gonna stick themselves and, and freeze it in time. You haven't been following the Gracie since 1993.